Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. And I'm Catherine, co-host and bestie. Here we are at episode number 191. 191. Crazy. Mm -hmm. We have got to come up with something for episode 200. Like a spectacular firework type of thing? Yeah, something really grand. Okay. Do you know how many podcasts never make it to 200 episodes? I just know that we're in the top 10, so we're doing pretty good. Yes, we are. We're in the top 10%, not top Uh, 10. Well, (laughs) yeah, I should have added percent. Yeah, we're Mm -hmm. in the the top 10% which is pretty good podcasts worldwide. They give a grade. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because we're still here. Like we haven't quit. (laughs) We haven't quit yet, everybody. Look at those girls. Okay. I think that too, Mm -hmm. but here we are. Yeah, we're consistent. Anyway. If you're listening and you have a suggestion for us of how we can do something fun and great for episode 200, please message us and let us know. How about that? Great. All right. Super. Uh, Catherine, if somebody's tuning in for the very first time and they don't know anything about our sponsor program, please enlighten them. Our sponsor program, we usually ask about $5 a month. That comes out automatically. They could go to tracydegraff.com and contribute whatever is on their heart but contribute generously if you will (laughs) and uh, it helps us with this you know this this really is like a mission it is and so we have a platform that we have to pay for and then sometimes equipment we're hoping for in the future some training yes on editing and a little bit more pro Mm -hmm. yeah yes and we have a new sponsor our friend vicky Yes. Shout Vicky, out to thank Vicky. You. Thank you for yes. sponsoring. That was a nice, pleasant little email that I got from the system that said, Woohoo, you yeah. have a new sponsor. So exciting. Yeah. I and think- and we do have it set up on the website. If you click on podcast, you go to tracydegraff.com, click on podcast. You can give a one time gift if you don't want to have the recurring gift, or you can just give monthly. And giving monthly is so easy. It, it's just the same the same amount of time it takes to put in the the digits you know mm-hmm. for uh, unless you're going to give us a million dollars <laughs> then by all means give us a one-time gift <laughs> but we truly genuinely appreciate the support and encouragement because it takes a lot of effort for us to put this together yeah in fact this morning we were chatting and we decided on the topic the topic by the way today friends is truth yeah we're going to talk about the truth. importance of truth yes and we were on the phone with each other going, well, what are we going to record about today? <laughs> and we thought this would be, you know, like, oh, yeah, this will be an easy research. Let's do it. And it, Catherine has been digging in all day. Yeah. I had things I had on my list to do, and I never ended up doing them. I just went down so many paths. There's so much to say about truth and yeah. that. Yeah, we'll get into it. Yeah, and the point that I'm making is that we do invest, usually it's a full day of our time to to research and to record and then to edit Edit. and then to get it up to where all the places that it needs to go. So this is like a part-time job for us. Without and, pay. <laughs> well, it's not paid yet, but that's why I'm I'm appealing to our listeners to, you know, give us money. <laughs> Just put it out there. Five bucks a month. I mean, come on now. Yeah. That's like a gallon of gas. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go. Let, where, now I got to find my note. There it is. All right. Here are the takeaways from today's episode, friends. It is called The Importance of Truth. We're, we're going to talk about why. Why is truth even important? Okay. So that's the title of the podcast, The Importance of Truth. Well, why? Why, mm-hmm. why is it important? Uh, Catherine found out some very interesting things about truthiness. I had never heard that term, and she hasn't revealed it to me yet, so that's going to be a fun surprise for me. She's going to talk about truthiness and also truth bubbles, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, if you stay with us for this whole episode, because you are going to get a lot of aha moments, I think. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So truth bubbles. And then I did my research today on truth and body language. Yeah. Yeah. And the body does not lie, as they say. Uh, and this was through a, a documentary that I watched on Prime, and it's called Body Language Decoded. It was quite interesting. So mm-hmm. I'm going to be talking about that. And as always, we will, at the end of the podcast, point you to Jesus mm-hmm. and scripture. And we always have a call to action. So stay tuned for that. 
Catherine, what say you about why truth is important? Well, after doing a bunch of research on this, it just occurred to me it all comes down to one word. If I could sum it up in one word, yeah. I would say trust. Trust. Without truth, we can't trust anything. We can't trust the, the news. We can't trust our spouse. We can't trust um, like a scientific research study if one is skewing, you know, the results or or even a financial statement. It's all based on, well, it's based on truth, which comes down to then trust. Yeah. That's what I would say about it. But why why is it important? Because we can't make an educated sound decision without truth. We can't have a solid relationship. We can't make a political um, vote without really knowing the truth about the candidates, right? Right. And um, it's really the way that we operate in a free world, a free country. You know, any we're not... Um, the, all, look at all the countries that are, um, they have a, a government that is so, has so much power and so much control, those countries are usually living in poverty because uh, it really comes from lies. Right. It does. Deception. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Think about like the days of World War II and, and Hitler and what he put out there. It was just all lies. So everything hinges on truth in terms of how we live in society and again how we make decisions um we need truth in order to thrive survive um gosh you know the and word that comes to my mind as i hear you describing that is foundational mm -hmm. that it's a foundation and without that foundation how can you build something yeah so how can you build a country if you don't have a, a rock, a foundation, right. Right? right? And in our country, we have, you know, the, the Constitution. That's our, that's our compass. That's our guide. You know, the Constitution is the thing that sort of is our foundation, yeah. right? And in a marriage, mm -hmm. you know, you've, you and Kenny have been married how many years? 31. 31. And Ron and I have been married 35 years. So if we didn't have truth, mm hmm in our marriages, if there was like, a, oh my goodness, I listened to this crime story. Okay, true story. Speaking of truth, yeah. I am trying to curb myself off of the true crime stuff, okay? Yeah. I just feel a little conviction. I'm doing a Bible study mm -hmm. um, that is about trust, mm -hmm. at which I told you about. And you're going to be joining me now with it, yes. with my sister-in-law, Jeanette, and then our friend, Sherry. So we're doing this Bible study on trust. And in one of the questions for next week's lesson, it talked about, well, what's holding you back from trust, you know, from trusting God? And one of my answers was just not having enough time to dive into the Bible and to get into the word and let it change me, right? Yeah. And this thought came to my mind, well, instead of listening to true crime, mm. like when I'm doing errands and stuff, mm -hmm. why don't I listen to the Bible, listen to sermons? And yeah. I used to do that, but then I kind of got into this habit of listening to this true crime and it's hard to break the habit. Well, I think it has an addictive component to it. It does. Because like, it's a mystery. Yes. And you have to know who did it. And right. then, uh, okay. So anyway, mm -hmm. all that to say, I'm working on curbing that. Good. And I, the last true crime episode that I sort of binged and was done with, <laughs> it was over. Uh, quit you. Okay, stop. It was over the weekend, and Ron and I have been remodeling our kitchen, which is a mess. Yeah. And I had my headphones on, and I'm listening to this guy. He had a completely double life. Because we were talking oh. about how can your marriage be like 30 years, you know, mm -hmm. based on lies. He was married to one woman in one state. She could not get pregnant, so they didn't have kids. But then he was also married to another woman in another state and had two children. And he lived this way for like eight years. I remember seeing a movie like that. It sounds like a movie. It yeah. sounds like you made it up. And then there were mm -hmm. people killed in, in this plot to yeah. cover it up. Yeah. Ugh. It's just like, come on now. Living a lie. True lies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what well, else? I'm going to say another thing, too. In a biblical perspective... When we tell the truth, it keeps us from sin. And, you know, sin is is um, everything that corrupts us. 
So when we're staying in the truth as much as humanly possible, and God gives us the capability, uh, that then we avoid sin. Because sin has all kinds of consequences that run deep. Uh, yeah, and there are consequences that are against ourselves. I mean, it's yeah. bad for us and it's bad mm-hmm. for other people. You know what's interesting to me about what you just said? It's always harder to remember lies than it is to remember the truth. Yeah, that's another reason for for being truthful. I learned that on you, true crime. You don't want to catch yourself. <laughs> just you know, tell the truth. You know what's funny that I just thought of? Uh, just the other day, we no, we had already mentioned that we were going to maybe do something about um, truth, right? But I forgot that. And I was in a thrift store and I pulled up this, I'm always looking for art and things like that. And I pulled up this little plaque and it said, um, nothing ruins truth more than stretching it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wish I picked it up now because yeah. at the time I'm like, yeah, that's not art. Put it away. You know, <laughs> it's but true. Now I wish I picked it up because it really is a really cool statement. And I can't remember which thrift store I saw it at. But you know, what's interesting to me is that, you know, like, so you have little sayings like that. And then of course, everybody just knows com- it's common knowledge that it's harder to remember yeah. lies than it is to remember the truth. Why is that? Why does the brain remember the truth of what happened Ooh, that's a good question however the brain doesn't retain a story that you're making up like which way did i say this yeah. right and i think that that's partly our creator yeah ch- trying to get us on the right track you know right. and he made our brains wired for truth they're wired for him yes praise god yeah Woo! yeah <laughs> get the holy spirit goosebumps <laughs> you've got the holy spirit activated mm-hmm. holy spirit it's interesting that the very first conversation in the Bible, besides God saying, um, this is good. Oh, my gosh. That's not what he said. He said, um, let there be good. light. Oh, let there be light. Well, yeah. Well, anyway, the first <laughs> question <laughs> is Satan. And he says to Eve, did God really say that? Yeah. And it's the first, you know, it's the first lie, too, that's said. Yeah. The very first thing in the Bible. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's and a half truth because, you know, well, he's, he's given her the little permission to, you know, is that what he really meant? Like, is that, you know, does it, wouldn't he want you to know? So I, I didn't write it down, I don't think, but that's called like a puffer lie. Really? It's puffing. It's got a name? It's puffing the truth. Mm. Yes. Puff, puffer I'm truth. I'm going to Google it. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Um, because... That, and it's kind of close to truthiness, which we'll talk about, but it's definitely, um, you know, it's like inflating. Oh my gosh. Here's, um, <laughs> I Googled puffer lie and up comes, uh, what is a puffer? A oh, puffer oh, you're is, looking at the English one? I don't know. Oh. A puffer <laughs> is someone who is hired by the seller at an auction to bid on the property in order to encourage other people to bid as well. I thought that you were going to say, I thought you were going to get yourself into some kind of reading about, um, in England, that it's a slang word for a gay person. Oh, okay. Or anyway, puff, it's puff, funny like that, that this puffer thing, it's also a lie. It's a deception because mm-hmm. they're there to just drive up the prices. Yeah. See? Inflate. Puff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, so uh, that is why the truth is important. Everything hinges on it. We we can't make decisions, or at least sound and proper educated decisions without it. Yeah. And this world would be chaos, as you pointed out correctly. Both of us have been to Haiti on mission trips. Mm-hmm. That's a great example of a country that has been just you know, ruined by their own government. Yeah, right. And different lies and takeovers and control and power. And it's a beautiful area. It's It could be beautiful. Oh, it was at one time. Yeah, but their farming practices and all the poverty that they have, and they don't have any kind of like drains and such and sewers and well, everything. Yeah, all of their timber and the trees have been stripped because um, I think it was Spain. Anyway, that's a whole another story, yeah. but... Yeah. All right. Anything else that you want to say about why truth is important? Now, I'm going to stick to what I have because as I was telling you, I just was reading and reading and going down all kinds of literature. I, I'll just say this just okay. for fun. Okay. I was in the Britannica thing 
article about truth. It was so confusing. Really? Because really what it's saying is truth is debatable, okay? Truth is not really truth. Truth is how one perceives it or how one um, believes their truth. And so there's all these other, there's these philosophical um, names for them. So there's correspondence theory. I'm not going to go into what all of these are. And the way this is written is just, it's not in layman's terms, put it that way. Coherence and pragmatic, pragmatist theories. There's, um, I've read all of this. I mean, <laughs> like, oh, no, <laughs> Tararsky and truth conditions. So again, it's yeah. saying that truth, no matter what, even in science, even in research, it's really debatable. Interesting. That's a short way to say Interesting, it. Interesting, not surprising, because the culture that we're in right yes. now, okay, everything is about my truth. Exactly. My truth. But they were saying this back in something, something A.D., so, for example, let me well, see. We're in AD. Well, then we're the BC. A- we're in no. the ADs now. BC, <laughs> come on now, <laughs> come on now, Catherine, pull it together, Cat. That's right. Gosh, AD, like oh, that was a long time. That was yesterday. Oh, that's that was hilarious. Today. <laughs> okay, A or BC. See, I almost did it again. Okay, yeah. BCE. So, for example, Aristotle in 384 to 322 BCE. Okay. I never heard the E thing. Well, okay. I didn't either. But anyway. I thought maybe that was something you, you knew I, and I, I didn't did know. It. What did he say? He said, to say of what is that it is or of what is not that is not is true. <laughs> this is where we are today. Yeah. And he said that all these Okay. Centuries ago, not just years ago. So in other words, the world provides what is or what is not, and the true saying or thought corresponds to the fact so provided. (laughs) Here's the thing. The Mm -hmm. human flesh and humanness is always here, right? From Mm -hmm. the beginning to now. Mm -hmm. So so we have the flesh. We have the human part of ourselves. Mm Mm-hmm. I get it that we can have two different perspectives about the same thing, right? So here I'm holding up my iPhone. Mm-hmm. You and I can but see. But are you? Well, yes, I am. I'm holding it in my hand. <laughs> you can clearly see, and it is an iPhone, it's... right? But my perception of it and your perception of it can differ. And then I ha- we have my truth, and then we have your truth, mm-hmm. right? So I understand that. Where it gets wonky. And crazy is, you know, where you have all these hundreds and thousands of different beliefs and truths. And how can you build on that? Yeah. A lot of it comes from these so-called thinkers of, you know, philosophers. And and a lot of it stems from that, that have said crazy things like, well, you're not really holding the phone. Um, It's the the, table that's holding up my arm that's holding the phone. Yeah, you know, something like that. Yes. And then um, even results in a research or everything is debatable. According to, you'd you'd have to look at this yourself, this Britannica, uh, what's it called? Truth. Uh, def- yeah, I can't even pronounce half the stuff on here. So, <laughs> well, you're just now getting squared away on BC and AD. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'd be looking into all that Britannica stuff. Well, you could see why I'm upside down in it. Oh, for sure. Okay, I'll say this about that. I do remember learning something. I think it was when I was taking my classes in college, which was like 40 years ago, on public relations and such. So I mm-hmm. had some courses uh, about that. And um, we're talking about perception mm-hmm. is reality in advertising. Because I remember oh. it was a it was an advertising course, mm-hmm. and so obviously you're you're trying to move perception. You're trying to yes. get people to perceive your product or service in the in a favorable way, so that it'll become reality to them. Yep. and they will purchase said product or service. I read a whole article about that very subject, about advertising and marketing, that we accept 
lies like this is the best pizza in the world or like elf the movie yeah, elf, congratulations he's like, he's like wow the best coffee in the yeah. world and we we kind of laugh it off knowing i mean the normal person or reasonable mind knows okay it's it's okay for the owner of that entity to say this is the best right but it would be helpful if it were in front of it saying in my opinion this is the best pizza but we don't do that right and it's accepted that that's okay right i went into this whole biblical article about all of that and that's why i'm scrambled (laughs) eggs now (laughs) she's like wow i was gonna text you but i knew you were doing your boot camp yeah but i was gonna say girl we're in deep yeah in this or at least i was i i thought the same thing anyway okay so anything else that you wanted to say about the why why truth is important or should we move on to truthiness well we could say real quick that Mm -hmm. it's important because god says it's important amen (laughs) done yeah (laughs) Close the book. Yeah. Right. All right. What about truthiness? What does that explain? Truthiness is what we think should be true. And also when it's uh, repeated over and over, it becomes easy to process and understand. Okay. So. Do you have an example? uh, Well, let's say there's a particular news channel that you listen to or that anyone listens to. Okay. Okay. When the mantra is repeated over and over, it no longer matters anymore where the source, where, you know, its source is coming from because people don't really think about the source or remember the source. They just remember the information. And for some reason, repetitiveness then becomes truth. Okay. Okay. And then also... It's like brainwashing. It is. But... But... Why are we watching that same particular channel or news source or friend group or whatever? It's because we want it to be that truth. That's what we want to believe. Yeah. We already believe what we believe. Right. We align with it. Exactly. And we want to uh, believe more of it, you know, so we're not going to go to outside sources. Right. Because that's, those are lies. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, that's what we, yeah. And the, on ourselves. the other side, it feels the same way. I feel like we do that with politics and religion, uh, for sure, because those are two, like, hot-button, controversial, mm-hmm. very highly charged emotional for sure. topics, right? Right. Uh, here, I just looked up, Merriam-Webster has a definition of truthiness. Mm-hmm. It says, a truthful or seemingly truthful quality that is claimed for something, not because of supporting facts or evidence, but because of a feeling that it is true or a desire for it to be true. Mm -hmm. That's like when I get on the scale. (laughs) Like, oh, I couldn't possibly weigh that much. (laughs) Yeah, like we're the top 10%. (laughs) When I go to the doctor and they give me, they get me on that stupid scale that has the big (sighs) chunky part, you know? I'm like, your scales are so off. My scale at home is much better. (laughs) Jerk for making me get on here. (laughs) I'm paying you. Get away from me. Yeah. All right. What else you got about truthiness? Uh, Well, it kind of then we can slide into actually these these bubbles I was telling you about. Well, starting to tell you about. Before you go into the bubbles, though, Mm -hmm. I feel like pretending that something is true is dangerous. It absolutely is. Yeah. It definitely is. You're in my truth bubble about that. (laughs) (laughs) We agree. (laughs) Yeah, it's dangerous. Like uh, because really, it's denial. You know, if you're if you're not looking at something with some supportive substance, evidence, something to give you the reason to believe what you believe, right? It's illusionary truth. Yeah, you're delusional. After after a while, it doesn't mean that part of it isn't true. There could be a portion of it. But I think it's so interesting. Like, I, I wonder how much of our country last, was it last week? We had the debate. I forget. The when. presidential debate. But in, it was recent. Yeah. And both candidates were like, you lie. You're lying. <laughs> oh, he's lying again. She's lying again. You know, it, it's just, you don't know who to believe. Yeah. 
and depending on what channel or source you're listening to or friend group or yeah, whatever. Yeah, they develop the backstory. You know, that reminds me of raising five boys because there uh-huh. was a sixth boy that lived in our house when I was raising, or my husband and I, thank God, there was two of us, mm-hmm. raising those five boys. And his name was not me. Oh, yeah. His name was not me. <laughs> Who yeah. did this? Not, not me. me. Yeah. Who said that? Not me. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody would claim. Or I don't know. And I remember when you told me the one time that your daughter had, like, kissed something with lipstick. The door jam. Oh. And it was her height. She's the only one that got into lipstick. <laughs> She's like, I didn't do it. That's I mean, human nature. Or when she carved her name into the furniture <laughs> with a railroad tie nail. Yeah. Ellis. <laughs> she said it wasn't her. It was Emily. Emily did that. <laughs> well, good thing Ellis didn't grow up to become a criminal because she would have been or a in chronic jail. liar. Well, yeah. Oh gosh. Okay, truth bubbles. Let's talk about okay, that. Okay, truth bubbles. Okay, let, let me look at my notes. They are within which truth is a personal choice. So our folks, our people, whether it's social media or your physical friend group, who you hang around with. Mm-hmm. That is your truth bubble, and it's it's your personal choice of the truth that you want to believe in, like alternative truths. What are you laughing about? Because I'm laughing because of the politics and such, right? Uh-huh. Because if there's stuff that I just don't want to hear, I snooze people on on social media. <laughs> yes, they're not in my bubble. <laughs> I'm like, well, right. It, We're all guilty of it, I think. Well, well I, I'm but, sure people snooze me too. Okay, you know. Now, yeah, never used to be. I didn't give a fiddler's fart maybe two decades ago, maybe even a decade ago about, about politics. No, I didn't. Not at all. Yeah. And I mean, I had opinions and things, but honestly, I wouldn't have said I have my own little. Yeah, but I think but I think, I think now you do gravi- so you gravitate toward what you're already like in your mind believing and thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's not like it's not like the other side. Whatever side you're going to pick, it doesn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like the other side if they're dyed in the wool over here and they're dyed in the wool over there, they're not going to change. No, they're not right. And they're not going to want to even be open to that that's what i mean like they're not even they're not looking to change and they're not open to change and so they don't even want to bother with more information about the other side unless if it's derogatory and you know combative and such and builds up their already belief that they have i I should say that we have because i'm including myself in this like we're all part of it yeah i i wrote this down because i felt like it was important Mm -hmm. alternative truths being constructed at all times feeding back through confirmation bias wait read it one more time i'm sorry my head my head exploded i know at the time just read it read it one more time come on alternative truths being constructed a so they're being built at all times feeding back through confirmation bias so okay that's yeah you just want people to tell you you're right yeah I'm with you. We're on the same team. Exactly. You're good. I'm good. We're all good. Those other people, idiots. But (laughs) their understanding, I should say, our understanding of the world is greatly compromised when we do that, when we think that way. You know what I think we lose in the minutia of Mm. that kind of political environment, which we're losing it right now in our country, Mm -hmm. we lose compassion for one another. We lose the opportunity exactly. to agree to disagree. We lose the opportunity yes. to just be like, okay, I can see your point. I have a different view, yeah. but we can still be friends. Like right. we lose that. So we ultimately it shreds a big portion of the fabric of our country because we obviously were the melting pot of the world. We're you know made mm-hmm. up of such a diverse culture. But when we're so polarized like that mm-hmm. in politics as well as religion probably and other things too, yeah, it's uh, we lose as a as a group we just we lose sure do. as a culture right yeah we lose um all kinds of uh blessings and relationships and yeah because like where's that. room for love and understanding and grace yeah which will <laughs> oh boy. right now which i'm starting scripture, to get convicted <laughs> yeah the scripture we picked is most suitable yeah. for for that yeah that so you stay just tuned said. we're coming to that yeah all right anything else yeah. about truth bubbles 
No. That was interesting. Thank you for bringing that mm-hmm. to the table. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit. Well, wait. Did you have anything else that, on your paper that you wanted to say before I go into body language? Well, it's kind of, it seems like it's a little bit miscellaneous, but. Go for um, it. And it's our podcast. We do what we random. want. Random. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I wrote this down. I put financially dash the Bible, social expectations, and laws and regulations Okay, so regarding finance, finances, mm-hmm. in free and open countries prohibit deceit and manipulation. This is why I was talking about earlier how, like, you know, countries that are in poverty um, have dictatorship and based on manipulation and things like that. But anyway, financial statements should present fairly in all materials, respects, and entities financial position, result of operations, and cash flows in conformity. So they they must convey the truth. And why am I bringing this up? Yes, why? Like I said, it seems random. I wrote it down. It seemed important. I, I guess just because the world that we live in, corporations, um, businesses of all sorts, I was reading, they don't always reveal when they have to do their financial accountability Mm -hmm. you know things they'll skew the truth and they'll puff it they'll either inflate it when it's to their benefit or they'll um you know make deflate it when it's to their benefit Mm -hmm. and if we're not careful in this country about um sticking to these regulations and truth we're going to end up like countries like that where there's poverty and and yeah because you cannot build something sustainable Mm -hmm. on they i think they have a term for it i think they call it like a paper tiger you know it looks like a tiger but it's really just paper Mm. you know and it's just nothing yeah and so it can collapse that would be bad that'd be very bad okay i'm going to talk a little bit about this documentary that i watched i thought it was great i would highly recommend it it's called body language decoded Okay. I find it quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So I've listened to many different body language experts analyze crime. (laughs) I have too. Okay. Okay. I have too. True true story. Mm -hmm. I'm working on not consuming so much true crime. But I have watched them because I think it's so interesting to have the body language expert analyze the person who's being interrogated. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Or in the court of law, the person who's testifying. Yeah. All right, so here here are my notes from this documentary. Dr. Lillian Glass, who is a behavior and body language expert, she's written 18 books. Uh, She says this, the body doesn't lie. Impossible for the body to lie. And do you know what she did way back in the 80s? She trained Dustin Hoffman for that Kramer versus Kramer movie or uh what? Or no, no, it wasn't that one. It was the one where he was dressed up like a woman. Oh, um, I thought it was um, something about what was oh, that movie? Was it with Lily Tomlin? Yes. Oh gosh, what oh, is no. the name of somebody that movie? Somebody knows it. Somebody, uh, yeah. somebody. I'll bet you it. somebody's listening. And I know. Going, going, come on, come on, subliminal. Okay, so you Google it and find out. Oh. I will just go over a couple more of these facts while you're googling that. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman. Well, she trained Tootsie. Thank Tootsie. You, that's it. It that's was called it. Tootsie. Yeah. When Dustin Hoffman had to pretend like be, to be a woman, there were certain traits that this woman helped him with in terms of like his language, because her expertise is in speech langu- uh, speech therapy as well. Okay, and that just led her to exploring how the body uh, m- works with the mind in mm. terms of movement. Okay? okay, did you know that there are forty three muscles in the face? Oh, I did not know that. And those 43 muscles can make 10,000 10, expressions. 10,000? Fa- yeah, you just made one right there. <laughs> two. You made two. 10,000 expressions. Okay. Our face illustrates fear involuntarily. So they showed an example. Like they had a, a dash cam of a car mm-hmm. of a couple that were hitting a deer. Obviously, that's a surprise, you yeah. know. And the deer goes out into the road, and then they freeze framed on their faces, like and, a deer in the headlights. Well, yeah, <laughs> because and their eyes got bigger, and they claim that that's like just the body to give you a better field of view, mm-hmm. you know. And then the forehead went like this, you know, like wonky, like ah, and the mouth was open, like yeah. to get more air and stuff. Very, very interesting. 
Uh, Joe Navarro, who is an FBI expert on this, Mm -hmm. he claims that the feet are even more accurate than the face. Because over time, we can adapt and learn, you know, different facial uh, expressions and such. Mm -hmm. But we don't focus on that as much as the feet. So his expertise is in watching the feet and what the feet are doing. I thought that was interesting. Hmm. They talked about the reptilian <laughs> brain. What? Wait, what are you saying? What? What are you laughing about? What's so funny? I'm just picturing. I mean, what did the feet watch do? <laughs> Involuntarily <laughs> kick like the Elaine feet. on Seinfeld when she tries to do what, what happens? <laughs> watch out for the feet. Uh, well, they gave like an example. Okay, <laughs> if the feet are pointed away from a person, well, what if they're pigeon toed? Well. <laughs> Just move on. (laughs) If the feet are pointed away, it means one thing. If they're pointed inward, if they're pointed forward, if they're crossed, Hmm. there's all these different things about the feet. Okay. Um, If your toes are pointed toward your partner, you're in good shape. (laughs) You're a okay. You're going to be okay. Catherine's looking at her feet. I'm looking at yours. Okay. Listen to this. This is interesting. Your thoughts go through your hands that's why we talk with our hands yeah because we're thinking and we're we're using body language to express what we're saying Mm -hmm. so you think a thought it comes through your your mouth it goes through your hands true yeah and even like if you're on the telephone like Mm -hmm. they've done a study about this like even on the telephone people will talk with their hands even though they know that the other person cannot see what their hands are doing i was going to comment on you earlier when we first started this particular episode, you were the him. No, that's not the word I want to say. You were very expressive with your hands when you were talking. Isn't and that interesting? I was going to say, yeah. Wow. Uh, okay, here's something interesting. Nerves fire with emotions and trigger muscles. So, okay, let's say that you're feeling the emotion of um, bitterness, anger, resentment, whatever. You, you, you feel like that gut punch. Mm-hmm. That fires, that emotion is felt in your nerve nervous system. And then those nerves fire into the and trigger the muscles. Mm-hmm. And so you could have an expression on your face that you are subconsciously, you're not you're not thinking about it at all. Mm-hmm. It's your brain. It's being fi- you know, everything is happening like in a nanosecond. Okay. I think that's so, so I have a question. Okay, yes. I, I believe all of that happens, mm-hmm. but are these experts saying that one can't fake it and trick? The, because there is no way that a suspect, let's say, is in the pokey room with the detective. <laughs> yes. I watch a lot of crime, too. Yes. And uh, they cannot, they can't tell if so. I mean, they can have a really good hunch with all their years of expertise and all the you know, training they've had. Yeah. But I really, truly believe that there are individuals who can control their their uh, body functions and who study things like this and are able to trick the experts. I, I certainly could not answer that question because I'm not that well-versed in it. However, I do find it fascinating. Yeah. I, I think that it's fascinating, and I think that there's definitely – a place for it, especially in our legal system, in just trying to, because obviously you can't stay in a court of law. <laughs> right. Hey, hey, Twitch. Yes, that's exactly, I was just going to say, Off well, if someone head. said my toes were pointed in the wrong direction, therefore I'm lying, I would be like, you're basing it on that. Are right. you kidding me? Obviously we have, we have um, a constitution. We have to have We evidence. have laws. Right. However, I think that it's extremely helpful to look into these things and to study these things and to find methods and ways of giving us information so that we can go, okay, I suspect based on that body language that that person is lying. We should follow up on this. Therefore, I am going to dig and dig and dig until the truth comes out. I can see where it could be a tool to follow up on Hunch. Uh, Okay, here's another thing that they said. Humans are either very comfortable with something or they're struggling with something. And therefore, because if you're very comfortable with, let's say, I did not murder this person, right? You're Mm -hmm. you're comfortable with it because you know you didn't do it, Mm -hmm. right? Or if you're trying to convince somebody that you didn't do it, but you're struggling with that because Mm -hmm. you know inside that you did it, that's going to 
that's going to have like a, a little war going on between your brain and your body. Mm, and like, that's that's what makes this stuff uh, so fascinating. Hmm. Reminds me of Fred Flintstone when he had the <laughs> the, the devil, devil on one and side the and the angel on that side. I love that. I love that. I'm like, oh, Fred. <laughs> Okay, uh, micro expressions. This this came actually from Darwin, and Darwin said that despite our best attempts to control emotions, if emotions are strong enough, the truth leaks out in our expressions. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, get this: humans who know each other on average lie to each other <gasps> one to two times per day. <gasps> you lied to me today. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Let me think. Did I? Yes, mm. probably did. <laughs> Humans who don't know each other lie an average of three times per day. How would they know this if someone's lying? Well, I think they did a study on it. Yeah, but someone could lie in the study. There you go. Chalk that up as that's one. <laughs> <laughs> Liar. I just don't know about this. Well, and I know that you're skeptical, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I would say that we probably lie a lot more than what we think. The, yeah. Right, because we're being polite. We don't want to say how we really feel. Um, and so somebody might say, you know, are you upset by that? And you go, no, not at all. But really, you are. That's a lie. True. Yes. True. Yes. Right. I mean, there are lies. And we were going to do this on our part two, like white lies and lies where we don't want to hurt someone else, like you did just point it out. Right. You know, or sometimes you could just let things go. True. Okay, uh, it's, they said in this documentary that a person's gait can tell a lot about them. Mm. And they further said that, like, the example that they gave was, if somebody's depressed, you can tell by the way they walk, you know, slower, yeah. their head is down. Mm -hmm. If a person is joyful, their shoulders are back, they're, you know, their more posture is better, yeah. they have a better facial expression, all of that. Yeah. And they said that you can trick the brain to believe what you know like if you're physically feeling like depressed you're mentally feeling depressed you can physically change the way you feel by just faking it oh i totally believe that yeah there's there's some legitimacy to that expression fake it till you make it yeah yeah and i mean i'm not saying that that's a a recipe for a solution for all depression no, at no. all because it can take talk therapy, it can take right, medication, all right. of that. But, but it's it certainly helps. worth trying. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, and it goes both ways. So the way that we feel can influence the way we move as well as vice versa. Hmm. So, you know, our body is so um, intricate. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, there was this rugby team, and they were in another country. I think it was like Australia or somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they did this thing called the haka. If you oh. Google it, rugby and the haka, you'll see it's a song and a dance. Like It's kind of like a song, but they don't really say anything. They just like utter. There's like utterances. Oh. The haka, H-A-K-A. -A. Okay. It was so interesting. So it's all these guys. And rugby guys are nuts anyway, right? Yeah, They're crazy. Right. <laughs> They're out there. No helmets, no pads. It's just brutal. Mm -hmm. My son Luke played rugby for like two weeks in college and broke his nose. It was only two weeks? Yeah. Well, well I don't know. It might have been a month, but it wasn't long. <laughs> It wasn't long, but after his broken nose, and then my, my nephew had to take yeah. him to the ER, and now he's got a little bump on his nose, like, for the rest of his life. And I'm like, mm, okay, yeah. like rugby. Mm -hmm. We well, we went and watched a couple of matches, and it's just, oh, they do I remember that, when you did that. That rutting or whatever it is mm -hmm. where they all get behind. Well, anyway, this rugby team does this haka thing. And they're all, these men are lined up on the field, and they're doing, like, almost like a warrior chant. Oh. You know, and they're like beating on their chest and putting their muscles up in the air and howling and they look aggressive. And they said that this ritual is done more so not to intimidate the opponent as much as to prepare them themselves for the battle that they're going to be in. Yeah. To puff up their yes. confidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was trained. Um, I, I used to sell lingerie back in the I, day, <laughs> as you know. Every time I think of that, I laugh. It's funny. It was back in the 90s. I was pregnant for the whole decade selling oh, lingerie. That's a, God. that's a twist. Yeah. Anyway, sure. in the training that we had for sales, I remember um, Novice Nicholson was the name of one of our big wigs in the company. Mm-hmm. He's passed away now, but he was an amazing trainer for sales. 
And he said every time he would go to a sales appointment, he would sit in his car and he would say, I've got seven seconds to get excited. And then he would count down from seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then he would say, boy, am I excited. And he would repeat that over and over to boost his enthusiasm, to bring his excitement level above a normal level. It sounds like truthiness. The well, word I said earlier. I'll you tell know, you what. You tell yourself something over and over. Right. You can believe it. Yeah. Make yourself believe it. Yeah. Final point about this documentary, and I do encourage people to go and watch it because I found it interesting. It talks, your nonverbals, okay, they really display who we are, what we are, and what we can do. They really do display that, and it's mm. all nonverbal. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to be said about body language. And, you know, the the interesting thing I find about it, like just like how when we first started talking about this, we mentioned that it's hard to remember a lie if you're telling a lie. Mm. Okay. That's the way God wired us. Mm -hmm. These nonverbals are, they're baked in the cake, baby. They're they're part of us. That's the way God made us. Yeah, true. And we have to communicate and communication is hard. And... (sighs) So we use the tools that are in our toolbox, and um, body language can communicate a lot oh, yeah. to another person. Mm-hmm. You wanna... I like the way it's said in the Little Mermaid yeah. song. Oh, yeah. When the sea witch, whatever, Ursula, whatever oh, yeah, her Ursula. name is. <laughs> and she says to, she's trying to convince, <laughs> I think it's Ariel. Yes, yes. That her voice is not important. That right. men don't men don't want to hear you anyway. A blabber and flabber. Or she says something like that, and then she says, "Let's not forget about body language." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah." I'm Even not, the cartoon knows. I'm picturing no. it. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, if you really want to tick somebody off, just mm-hmm. um, while they're talking to you about something important to them, just get on your phone and scroll your phone. <laughs> I was just gonna say, cut them off or right. Hello, body language. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. Or well, yawn or fall asleep. Or, Which our listeners are probably doing. Please don't. <laughs> All right. We have to wrap. We have to wrap. We have to wrap. All right. Let's wrap. We always have scripture. By the way, come back next week for part two because we had too much to talk about today. Mm-hmm. So next week, we're going to go into part two of the importance of truth. We're going to talk about what the Bible says about it. Yes. So that's going to be good. We're going to touch on white lies, AI, and also why people are inclined to believe lies. Right. And then following that, we're going to talk about... Um, Trust. Trust, 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 the Bible study. It's all leading to that. Yeah, because this Bible study that I've only done, <laughs> <laughs> Catherine forgot, I've only done one session so far. It was amazing. I, I mean, I we talked about it last week, and then I, I'm halfway through session two doing the homework. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's called um, Embracing Trust. Mm. I think the I have- author's name is Barbara Weaver. Joanna. Joanna, Joanna, Weaver. Joanna Weaver. Yeah, I'm ordering the book. Oh, good. Okay, uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6 says this, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. I love that scripture. Me too. And also John 14, 6 says this, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm-hmm. I love how many times Jesus says in the Bible, very truly, I tell you, or truly, truly, I tell you. He's constantly telling people, I'm telling you the truth. Right. And, and it you matters. have to either believe him or believe that he was a total nut job and nothing at all came to fruition. Well, that's not true. Yeah. Uh, okay, final call to action. We thought it would be important to say this. Jesus says that he is the truth. So here's the call to action for today. Seek the truth by seeking Jesus. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Seek the truth by seeking Jesus. The Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all my heart. To all your heart. Do it. And how would you tell someone to seek Jesus? I would say get into his word and get to know him. Mm -hmm. Get into the Bible and start reading. Mm -hmm. Start with the Old Testament. Or I'm, I'm sorry, start with um, the New Testament if you don't want to go back yeah, into all the... I would say that too. I mean, you can do... The book of Genesis is amazing to just read through the history there, but also then bump over into the Gospels and read the book of John or Matthew, Mark, Luke. And if you're having a hard time understanding and interpreting, you can make sure you get um, a reliable source, but 
the Bible, which has maybe the NIV on one side and the message on the other, yeah. it helps with, it's not changing the scripture or anything like that. It's just helping you to understand it in today's yeah. uh, language. We have so many tools um, available to us with understanding the Bible. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, you can go to church. You could join us for church. We have um, Christ Community Church right here in Piatone, Illinois. We have services on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. You can get online. Yeah, you can watch it on Facebook Live if you want to, or Mm -hmm. just come, be with us. Yes. Hang out. Come and see. Yes. All right, well, this was fun. Yeah. You've been listening to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm still comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm still Catherine. See you next time.